Hey everybody watching, before I start the podcast I'd like to give a super special shout out to all of our viewers who support us over on Patreon. Without your guys support it would be so much harder to make this kind of long term content. If you're new and you like the content, consider going over and supporting us over on Patreon. Links down below. Anyways, with that being said, thank you everybody and enjoy the podcast. See ya! I love the part when I was like, ah! Give me a little kamikaze! Give me a little bonsai! Wake up in here! They're going to the land where the code of the ninjas began. But I said, You are not Japanese. I can do it. Now, for the first time, the true story. Welcome Japan. Welcome Japan. Welcome Japan. Welcome Japan. I'm nothing but a worthless gaijin. Hey everybody out there on the sexy ass YouTube sources, your good old buddy Tikyo Sam coming to you live from the J Land on the Welcome Japan podcast here, uh, broadcasting from lovely, sexy Tokyo, Japan. We are today, we are joined by a friend of a friend, soon to be super best friend, uh, named Dean, and he is currently in Iwate. Yes, today's episode is on Iwate Prefecture here in northern Japan, and, uh, yeah, thanks for coming on the podcast, Dean. No problem, man. My pleasure. Yeah, dude. So uh, anyway, like every other podcast that we've been doing so far, we're going to learn a little bit more about um, the person that we're interviewing, uh, in particular Dean today, and then we're going to learn more about the prefecture, uh, Iwate, and uh, then we're going to learn about his personal experiences and stories there in Iwate, and then afterwards... Uh, we're going to let him plug whatever he wants to plug for this. And, uh, yeah, let's get into it. So, first off, what's uh, what's your name? Uh, I mean, like, do you have an online nickname or do you have, like, a, or do you have a nickname or do you have an online handle that you'd like to be called instead of Dean? No, Dean is, Dean is good enough. Okay, awesome. <laughs> I'm still, I still have my analog traits. Sorry. Nice. <laughs> You're not 100% digital yet. <laughs> no. <laughs> So, uh, Not bad for an old fart, though. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, it's just like Groucho Marx said. You're only as old as the woman you feel. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, where are you from, Dean? Uh, I'm from Vermont in the United States. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Oh, do you mean here in Japan? Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, in, uh, back before you came to Japan, we're at. Uh, uh, Vermont. I grew up in Vermont, the United States. Okay, and uh, how old are you currently? Oh, do I really have to tell? You, you know, I mean, these are all complete. By the <laughs> way, I don't think I had this talk with Dean beforehand. If there's any questions that you feel that you don't want to answer, like, straight or whatever, just to say uh, you could just be as sarca- <laughs> sarcastic as hell. <clears throat> Seriously, I'm 49, about to turn 50. Okay. Awesome. But, you know, just like that clothing shop that girls go to, Forever 21. Am I right? Am I right? Come on, guys. Can I get... <laughs> of course. <laughs> Forever 33 in my case. Yes. Oh, so, uh, I, so where? How long have you been in Japan for? Oh boy. Um, in chronological time, sixteen years. Um, by the calendar, the first time was about eighteen years ago. Okay. Wow. Nice. Uh, and are you currently married? Are you in a relationship? If so, are they Japanese? And have you ever dated Japanese people? Uh, single looking and. Back in the day, a little bit more than right now. Uh, <laughs> okay. You don't want to be a guy growing old in this country. <laughs> Just like anywhere else. Yeah, right. Oh, tell me about it. I mean, come on. <laughs> the, uh, yeah. <laughs> what am I doing? That's, uh, so uh, how's, your jev- how's your Japanese level? Reading, writing, speaking. Can you call the internet company and tell well, them your router's broken? Of course, you're familiar with the uh, the the, uh, the uh, JLPT. If there was a Jun e, a Jun N one, I'd be the poster boy. Okay. Um, I I passed the old DQ more than a decade ago. Nice. Um, I now am struggling with passing N one. I've gotten as high as a fifty, or I get as high as an eighty, as low as a fifty, and you need about a hundred and ten for a pass. So. Let's call it uh, Jun and one. 
Nice. Pre, Pre-N1, you know, <laughs> he's going can, into I, N1. I can read a newspaper. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So as far as, uh, as far as I'm concerned, guys, that's pretty fluent in my book. I always ask everybody that's gone on the podcast so far. It's like, I've, uh, I took the JLBT one a long ass time ago and I passed, but that's, that's the old test. It wasn't the new one. So I don't know if that applies to anything. Cause I, I haven't studied in freaking years, but, um, but, yeah. what, what, what level did you say you passed before? I passed one and two before, but yeah. the new test, I tried again just for funsies and I, I failed. <laughs> Like three it times. It's a blank, blank, th. <laughs> hmm? um, th- there's no guarantees if you pass the old one, you'd pass the new one, the old EQ, but you'd 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 have a shot. Yeah, the, well, I mean, the new one was really tough for me for the listening because they, it's like on the second one, it's mostly practical uh, knowledge, but on the first one, they do like they do so many last minute like changes, especially during the listening part, that really kind of screwed me over. And the kanji was very, very like. Uh, special, like, special, uh, fucking, what do you call it, uh, you know, it was, uh, very technical, like, you know, uh, senmon, senmon technique, like, special, well, speciality. I, I agree with you, but, uh, the kanji is actually my strong point. I, uh, oh, when, okay. I was, when I was a jet many years ago, I just spent three years studying kanji to start off the study again. Uh, that's, that's not a tough part, but uh, I agree with you completely on the listening. Yeah, the grammar was a little, uh, the grammar and the listening is what got me hard, but I mean... Yeah, you know, I mean, it's I can call the internet. I, I I found my house in Japanese by myself, so it's nothing too hard. Uh, but anyway, um, so how can you tell us how did you end up moving to Japan? I I came over as an ALT for a private company. I came around a tourist visa, found a job at a private ALT company, and that's how I got started here. What about you? Well, I like probably a few others, including Russell, yep. um, sit on the Jet program. Okay. Uh, I was a few years before Russell in uh, a prefecture away, but yeah, like a lot, like a lot of people, I started on jet. Okay, so, um, and if you could pick three re- three reasons why you came to Japan, what would they be? Uh, why I came to Japan. So you want me to go back in time? In a time or, machine, Bill and Ted or, or, style, or, or three reasons that I stay here. Uh, three reasons why you originally came here. We can get the into the three reasons, reasons why, why I originally you yeah. came for is I had worked overseas in Finland for two years. I was back in America, and I just I had the itch. Um, I was at a time in my life where I uh, I still had some of the wanderlust in me. Okay, and that was the first reason. The second reason was I had studied uh, karate when I was at the University of Colorado, although I called it karate back then, but. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so I had some ties to the Japanese community in the greater Denver area. You know, had met a few, you know, new, new people, knew a couple of people over here. I was not completely unfamiliar with the culture. And uh, also had a, a friend who had been a Fukushima jet years and years ago. Okay. I mean, we're talking like almost with the original. I think I think he was there in 1991. Okay. He's a friend of mine from uh, the University of Colorado. He was getting his master's where he was getting his bachelor's there. And part of his job part of his job in Jet Alumni Association was to recruit jets off the uh, University of Colorado campus. So needless to say, he gave me the spiel and then later on, a couple of years later, when I was back from Finland, he again gave me the spiel and said, I'll get you on the program. Don't worry. I'll write your recommendation. It certainly helped. That's awesome. So you already had like an automatic shoe in into the into Japan, pretty much. That's great. Not shoe in. You never. You know, <laughs> I wouldn't say shoe in, but I, I definitely had a, a a decent background. Nice. Yes. Yeah, so uh, and so uh, that's so your friends basically told you like, hey, you should come over. But are there any other reasons? That's one. Are there? Oh well, I mean, I thought I gave you a couple. Um, well, Sorry. So karate interest, and interest in the martial arts. Yeah, interest uh, in the martial the arts. Uh, I also knew that Japan loves baseball, and uh, I'm a big sports fan. So I, I thought some of the sports culture. Knowing about that, I think I wanted to explore some of that. I definitely knew that there was some good skiing in Japan. I remember watching the Sapporo Olympics when I was five years old. Okay, so you you, you already had like kind of a background on Japan. You wanted you liked the sports the sports culture or it seemed interesting to you and also you had like a friend that was kind of like kind of edging you on to be like hey you should go check this stuff out 
Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely, I, I'd heard about Japan and the JET program for years, and uh, I eventually reached the point where I thought it would be a good idea to try. Now I'm still here. Okay. Hey, you know, that's that's good. We're going to get into that part, that question at the end of the interview. But so what's, can you tell us briefly, what are some of the hobbies that you do at the moment? As you can see here, I play a lot of video games and read a lot of comic books. Uh, do you mean besides uh, Pachinko and Mizu Shobai? Uh, besides Pachinko <laughs> and Mizu Shobai. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I did Pachinko once and <laughs> learned that a fool and his money are soon parted. That was it. <laughs> um, well, for me, I, I guess I can still qualify it as a uh, as a hobby. Studying the language, mm. you know, has always been of interest to me. I've uh, I don't I don't attack it with the single minded fervor I did when I was jet and and younger, but I still do try to learn where I can pick it up. Um, definitely the outdoors, the 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 sports culture here is very strong you know you can I, can I can go down and watch you know the the second best baseball league in the world down in Sendai I can watch Asia's best professional hockey team up in Hachinohe um, you know there's even halfway decent basketball to be played here so as a spectator as a participant I will spend most winters as long as I'm you know, as long as there's enough snow on the ground going skiing 20 to 30 times. I interviewed a guy from Hokkaido, and, uh, and like, it's so unfortunate. He didn't, he doesn't like skiing or snowboarding or at, at all. No winter, no winter sports are for him at all. And I'm like, ah, oh, multaine. <laughs> exactly, multaine. <laughs> yeah. That is a total waste. Yeah, this is so, man. But he, uh, but yeah, I mean, like, uh, that's great. That's awesome. Okay, so, um... So, guys, why don't we get into the prefecture questions for Dean over here. And it is, so how did you end up in Iwate? And how did you end up with your current, or I guess with the job that you had when you moved to Iwate? Well, I guess initially I first heard of Iwate because when I was in Finland, uh, a friend of mine from Colorado who also had uh, gotten Jared Spiel about joining the JET program. Um, she was an she was an ALT in uh, she was an ALT in Ichinohe Iwate, which is a you know s small town. Okay. Really. But I had kept in touch with her when I was in Finland, and we were kind of exchanging information on on our uh, on our experiences teaching overseas for for two years. That's the first time I heard of it. And so I think that when I got around to the JET application in uh, 1980 or 1997, I just kind of put down, you know, I, I think my first choice was like, uh, you know, I, I definitely wanted to go where they were skiing. So my first choice was Hokkaido. My second choice was uh, Nagano. And I thought, what the hell, Pono Iwate. And then it turns out later on, because I had worked as a uh, paraprofessional in Boulder, Colorado for about three or four months, in uh, special ed, um, I was chosen to be the first full-time special ed ALT in Iwate. Ah. And um, it was because I was probably one of about four people who applied to the program who had had actual overseas ESL experience and special ed experience. Wow. Talk about, yeah. like, coincidental, right? Wow. So, yeah, I mean, Iwate chose me more than I chose Iwate, though. I kind of went into it knowing, well, I'll probably like it a lot better than some congested area down near, you know, Tokyo or Fukuoka or someplace like that. Mm, yeah, that's, wow, that's, that's so interesting, though. I mean, like, just talk, like, talk about fate, kind of, right? It's just like the, all the stars kind of aligned, and that's crazy. So, uh, uh, you know, so how long have you lived in Iwate now, then? Oh, well, the whole time. I've been here 16 plus years, or just short of 16, I can't remember, uh, but it's always been at Iwate. I've lived in three different places. Okay, and uh, okay, so we'll, we'll kind of go into like a light question for you then. There, every prefecture has some like food or something that makes it unique and special. Um, like even if uh, they don't really promote it that much, like I used to live in Chiba, and Chiba has peanuts and uh, jagai or uh, fucking um, sweet potatoes. And uh, but one thing that people don't notice is that uh, Chiba actually has a lot, like a very large microbrewery and wine scene, and they don't promote that at all for some reason. 
And so, can you tell me about Iwate? What's some food that like maybe people know about or they don't know about that's there? Okay, well, the big ones you're going to hear about are Wonko Soba, which is the, uh, I don't know if you've heard of it, but yeah, it's... The cup it, soba or something, right? It's the cups of soba that you continually eat until you, basically until you can't eat anymore. It's it's more it's more an eating competition. Um, I, I swear to God, after the third time I did it, I'd never end up doing it again in my life and still manage two more times after that. <laughs> I think I'll retire for life. Nice. Um, which, which is famous. Um, you'll also hear about Morioka Rayman, which is famous. It's a clear noodle, very good in the summer. It's served in a vinegary broth with a couple of vegetables. and It's not bad, but to tell you the truth, the... The top food in the prefecture, my vote would probably go to either A, jajamen, which is um, udon noodles with a spicy miso paste attached to it. Mm, that sounds and good. It's very, very filling. Or also maisawa beef. And maisawa is about two towns away from me. Okay, that's like, is that almost as good as Kobe beef? Or Well, it is done well. In like all Japan taste competitions, it's beaten Kobe beef on occasion. Oh wow! In most years, it is considered one of the top flavors of beef in Japan. Wow, that's that's cool. Me, oh, okay. I'm gonna have to. I'll look that up next time I go to my supermarket. See if they got any of that going. I don't think they even have Kobe beef at my supermarket, but I'm gonna keep my eyes out for that. Uh, and like, what? Almost as much as Kobe beef too. So. <laughs> so what food do you like to eat? Uh, like you know, what about you? Personally, when you first came to Japan, now like is it is your diet mostly Japanese or is it like other foreign food? It's a mixture. It's a mixture. You get your staples after a while. Um, I found for the most part, I like most Japanese food, except for the strange slimy sea creatures and uh, natto and umeboshi. But almost everything else is just about fair game. I'm not I'm not big into guts, but just about any type of fish will be fine. Mm, I do love the fish here. The fish here is great. I, I didn't eat, I didn't eat fish before I came here, so it's 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 a nice nice change of pace. And also an understated note note about living in Japan is you also get a lot of really good food imported, especially from other Asian countries. The Chinese food here is great. The Korean food here is great. Mm. Um, there are a couple of good Thai places. Um, all over Iwate, we have every explosion of like Nepali, Indian, Pakistani, Bangladeshi cuisine. Wow! So you guys definitely you got it all there, pretty much. You got all the selections. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're we're like probably the most remote place in Japan, anyways. This side of Hokkaido. But it's uh, that's good that you guys have variety. Um, yeah, I didn't even eat like Indian food before I even came to Japan. I just I love it. I can't. I eat Indian curry at least a couple times a month. Oh yeah, I mean it's it living here has opened me up not just to how really really good Japanese food is, but how a lot of other Jap uh, another a lot of other great Asian cuisines. Yeah, it's uh, definitely like I mean that's one of the great things about living here, guys. Is like there's I mean one it's like Japan, so you know the food is pretty much safe to eat anywhere, and then two it's just like they take such good care with it versus the Indian food I had in Hong Kong or Taiwan or something. It's nothing compared to here. Uh, but okay, so let's talk about what are some cool places in Iwate that you'd represent or you'd tell us about nature wise, city wise, you know, places around work. Like, what can you tell us about those? First place I'd mention to you is uh, Api Ski Area, which is in the uh, western part of the prefecture over by Akita. Um, it is a, it is, I mean, to tell you the truth, back in the States or, say, in Europe, it might be a mid- to medium-large size ski resort. But it's a huge one here. It routinely makes top two in Japan, but best two in Japan lists. It's usually duly go with Niseko or Hakuma for that title. Um, and it's also almost invariably top five in Asia. And it is a really good ski area, which combines... Um, good skiing, good snow, with a very, very good business model. Oh, okay. And, and, and they're also, they have proven, for, for compared to most other businesses in Iwate or with most other tourist places, incredibly adept at getting foreign tourists to come in. 
Yeah, I um, <laughs> did you hear about the news today about those four Australians or something that got stuck somewhere in a ski, ski resort and they were able to get rescued because of Facebook? Oh, yeah, something like that. Well, there's a local ski area that I go to this year um, that is that gets a ton of powder. And so they, they open up, they, they basically take in what used to be their off piece day areas and actually made de facto trails out of them. But they won't let you go in there unless you have a fully charged cell phone with your emergency number and a uh, helmet on. Wow. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, I saw that and I was like, I was like, let me guess. They went off the pass of like path without asking. Yep. Yep. They, they did that. It's like, well, luckily no one died, but I'm still like, come on, dude, like get your shit together. Uh, but they were able to, it was amazing. They, they, their phone wasn't working, but their internet was. So they, e they sent out a distress signal or distress thing on Facebook and then they sent a message to their friend in Singapore who found the phone number for the place, called them, and then they had to send, like, a balloon or something out with a wireless beacon pretty much so then they could use the GPS from their cell phone to send it there to show them where the GPS was for their uh, location. Pretty nuts. Smartphones for the win. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, yeah, so, I mean, what about, uh, okay, so those are, so skiing places, what about, like, natural beauty when it's, like, summer or anything? Are there any places you'd recommend? Well, I can't hike up it anymore, but uh, Mount Iwate, which is uh, also known as Iwate no Fujisan, or the Mount Fuji of Iwate, is a great place to hike. We have a couple other good mountains for hiking. Um... What else? Like um, semi-natural stuff. There's a, a very uh, recently u approved as a UNESCO site called Hiraizumi that is also a very, very good place to, to visit. And there, there, I mean, it's kind of a, a sitch. It's, it's several different. Um, oh, God. Jomon era? I don't know if it goes that far back. But it was definitely like a lot of buildings that are. 9th century, 10th century, 11th century. And if you want to see the whole thing, you're going to have to do some walking. Okay. But, um, got a wonderful seashore. But, you know, I'm a Vermont mountain boy, so I rarely, rarely make it out that far. Okay. But I can tell you that that's the best sushi in the world out there is on the uh, Uate seashore. That's awesome. Hell yeah. Uh, what about city? Are there any places in the city that you recommend going and checking out? Well... Morioka, which is uh, a town I've lived in most of the time I've been here. I'm not living there because of my current job. But um, it's it's how I describe it to people is it's the best way to see Japan at its crossroads because it is essentially a modern, bustling prefectural capital of about 300,000 people. So you have enough city life to make it a city life. In, in fact, um, uh, the past two weeks or so, I've discovered that both Jeff Beck and Carlos Santana will make it up to Morioka on their, on their tours this year. So it's not totally remote. It's got just enough to be a city. It's got just enough, you know, that if you want to go get a, you know, a, a Thai dinner or catch a movie, it's there. You want shopping, it's there. But it is surrounded by great natural beauty. Um, it's about 20 miles away. 20, no, 12 miles, 12 miles away from Iwate-san. Okay, wow, so you can see it all from there, huh? So it's 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 a great place. I, I call it the, the crossroads of where um, rural Japan really meets urban Japan. You, you, it's, it's kind of a, a buffer zone between the two. And um, it's also where old-fashioned Japan meets modern Japan. Mm. I, uh, yeah, I've, uh, what is it? I didn't, um... Yeah, I haven't been there before. Uh, I had a friend that lived there for a while. Unfortunately, he uh, he passed away while he was still working there. Um, but Can you just run the name by me? Maybe I know that. Roger Swan. He was. A, yeah, I remember. I met Roger before. Yeah, he. Um, what was it? Uh, I just. Yeah, you know, he. I talked to him a bit when he was working there, but like you know, he used to live in Tokyo and he was going to school here, and then he. Moved up there, then I guess some sickness or something happened, and he passed. It was pancreatitis, actually. Yeah, pancreatitis. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's uh. Sorry, Roger. I don't know if you wanted that divulged. No, no, no. It's fine. I mean, I think it's out there on the internet. I just, you know, it's still kind of hard for me to talk about it. But he, um, what is it? Uh, there's uh, but yeah, I mean, like he was my only connection really to Iwate, but. 
um, I remember he always had a really good spirit about himself when it came to the snow and everything and heating up his house and all this stuff. But uh, I never really got to ask him about what he thought about the, um, you know, living there uh, for like places or beauty wise. And um, yeah, that's why uh, bringing that up. And one thing, um, just to move on to the next topic, where where do you like to go? Like, where should I go to make friends if I don't if I speak? You know, I don't speak that much Japanese. Where can I go in Iwate to make some friends or possibly pick up some girls or not pick them up like physically, but I mean, go and create a good conversation that possibly could lead to dating down the line. Okay, well, if you're Morioka, the first two places you'd probably choose would be Sundance, which is, get this, a combination Irish pub, Tex Mex grill. Sounds both awesome. Can, and it does a reasonable enough job of both. You know, it's it's like where it's like where all my uh, friends from the Commonwealth when they want a pint of Guinness, mm. that's where they go. That's awesome. Uh, are oh, they, 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 they they proceed to complain about the prices too, but uh, you can also get yourself a good uh, taco rice or uh, you know uh, your tortilla or something like that too. So it's not it's not bad, and it, it and the uh, the the manager there is uh, done speak a lot of English, but he knows the value of making sure somebody there can speak. You know, oh. you know, he's very friendly, very good staff, well-trained staff, and he has hired foreigners to work before there. So, okay. So, and then, and then the other place would be in the same building, hmm. and um, it's a uh, it's a uh, disco uh, owned by an American. His name is James Hareyama. Okay. Uh, that would be. They would both be in the Nikatsu building. Very much in the center part of town in Morioka. Okay, that sounds awesome. Uh, are there any other places like just social gatherings or any place that's uh, maybe not night and alcohol related, where like uh, anything like that that you'd recommend for people that aren't big drinkers or night goers? Well, I mean, I just like you say. I mean, if you're gonna be there long term, you pick your thing and you do it. You you know you. You join a, you know, pick pick an interest, pick a sport, pick a hobby, and join the class. Um, I think if you want more of that basic level, the Iwate International Association is on the fifth floor of a very nice public building, and um, you know that might not be. You, you will occasionally um, find foreigners hanging out there. Um, definitely, you'll find Japanese people who are interested in meeting foreigners there. But that would be a good place to start your search if you're in Morioka. Okay, awesome. And so now we're going to get to another question, which is, so this is the fun part. What is the hardest part about living in Iwate? And then we're going to ask what's the easiest part. So what's the hardest part? Weather, location, people, etc.? Well, most people would tell you the weather, but to be honest, born in Vermont, went to school in Colorado, lived in Finland for two years. The, the weather is fine here. For me, it's the if, if I'm going to complain about the weather, I'll save it for the summer. Okay. Um, I guess I guess the thing is, and again, some people may complain about how rural it is, but I grew up in a Vermont town of 2,500 people, so uh, I don't know. I mean, the the fact of the matter is that I, especially if you're kind of use, I mean, it's it's very different than a lot of the rest of Japan. You definitely have to have a taste for for the life here it, it is it is quite rural for the most part especially when you are not in the ca the capital city mm. yeah so would, and you got to be used to that so you have to be kind of used to like that rural setting for the most part uh winters are they as bad as hokkaido or aomori or akita or are they not as bad they might be colder but with less snow because um Actually, the 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 old mountains, which are the which is the top range of the Japanese Alps, um, jut through the prefectures, kind of like a back. They're kind of like the backbone of the island. And of course, Akita, being on the west side, gets the weather straight out of Siberia. You know, they get all that cold air, and then the the mountains, the old mountains, tend to break it up as it comes in to 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 uh, to Morioka and then further down. So so. Usually, and of course, Almore also gets a lot of that weather, again, coming straight from Hokkaido and before that Siberia, whereas we're a little more protected by mountains. We get a little less snowfall. It can occasionally get colder for whatever 
ge uh, ge uh, meteorological reasons, but it's uh, it's not that bad. Okay, so so it's more about like kind of the really cold weathers when it does happen, and kind of the rural placement you'd say is the hardest part of living in Iwate. Uh, I mean, in Tokyo, you can you can live for years and you know barely. You know, you can get along fine without learning much Japanese. And you'll find that you're, you know, in a big boat. <laughs> yeah. But if in you're in Iwate. River, <laughs> if you don't, if you don't stick with the language here. Yeah, you're, uh, yeah, I mean, I always, uh, I described in one of my most recent videos where I was explaining to a student why she needs to learn English. Because if she went over to America and she only speaks Japanese, she's in this giant bubble, but she's only a little dot in that bubble until she learns English. And so, uh. Yeah, agreed, agreed. If you're outside, it's easy to use English in Tokyo, but it's, try living outside of Tokyo and not studying. You're gonna, you're not gonna get far. Uh, what about, what's the easiest part about living in Iwate? Well, it's off the beaten path, and if that's your thing, it's, it's, it's definitely gonna give you that. It's gonna give you a unique experience, you know, the, there's a, a lot of, you know, a lot of, and I, I don't wanna, you know, but a fair amount of Japan is a very urban, uh, urban, suburban areas. It's going to give you, I'm not going to say a cookie cutter experience, but it's definitely, Iwate is going to take you quite a ways away from that sort of experience. Mm. You know, if you want the fresh air, if you want the mountains, you know, if you, if, if you don't mind having cows for neighbors instead of people, that Iwate is going to give you a really unique experience. Okay, so let's say okay, so Dean, I'm let's say I'm going to Iwate for three days, and uh, you can choose if it's winter or summer. Um, what season is it that I'm coming? And what are we doing, man? I'm up for anything. You're showing okay. me around. Three days. Okay, we are definitely coming in the winter. Okay. okay. Because of the summer, we're just going to be like sitting around my apartment complaining. <laughs> okay. Sweating all over, sweating all over the couch. Um, yeah, we definitely we'd uh, we'd go skiing quite a bit, and beyond the skiing, we'd probably go to Abbey. Abbey would be the first place I'd say, unless you were going to venture to other prefectures. Okay. But Abbey would be the place we'd you know, we'd hang out there. Uh, I I actually know the manager of the the Nepali restaurant there, so I could hook you up with a free beer or two. Okay, awesome. Uh, and I also know the uh, you know if you can't if you can't speak Japanese, you know, either I can translate for you, or I know some of the uh, Japanese staff that is bilingual. This is they, they they keep a lot of bilingual staff there, at least at the the higher levels, to handle tours and to handle people coming in from other countries. Uh, um, and, but we would not just do that. There there are a few other things to do. Um, I probably. In the evening, I take it we go into Morioka and we probably watch uh, the uh, Iwate Big Bulls, the professional basketball team, J League Second Division. Okay, awesome. And, yeah, not bad. I mean, it's it's basketball. If you're a sports fan, it's yeah, I love sports. Cool. It's great. Love watching them. Okay, awesome. Uh, what else are we doing? And then since you got your legs got sore and you don't want to go skiing the next day, we'll go <laughs> to Matsukawa Onsen, which is uh, up near Mount Iwate. Okay. And it's outdoors. It's out in the snow. And it's got a, yeah, a Roten burrow. It's several Roten burrows. It's even got like some, that some, some of the onsens are actually like in little caves. Small little caves and dentures in the rock. And, oh, that sounds so cool! And it and it, it, it is literally out in the middle of nowhere. You know, it's it's gonna it's gonna take like a half hour to drive there. <laughs> wow, you that's know. so awesome! <laughs> is that and, uh, are there uh, okay? That's so cool that you know I don't even think about that because I'm such a stupid Tokyo boy that you actually there's places that like are so popular within the prefecture that like. You're gonna go 30 minutes out of your way just to go to that one place, and there's nothing. Maybe there's they got convenience stores, but there's nothing else around there that you really want to see except that place. And you're traveling out of your way to go there. You don't get that and, in Tokyo ever. <laughs> and Matsukawa Onsen is definitely the place to do that. And uh, I'm sure you've heard of the uh, the, the Matsukawa is actually a mixed onsen. Oh, nice but, konyaku. Konyaku, but, yeah. Yeah, I, I that's kind of overblown because you kind of get the idea that oh yeah, I'm gonna see uh, 
you know, Brazilian supermodels just off the plane. And it, <sighs> yes. <laughs> Yes. Usually, <laughs> usually it's a couple of old grandmothers, you know, oh, guy crazy, dick I Yeah, I'm just like, come on, baby, you know you want some of this. Jump over here. <laughs> I got something to show you. <laughs> now, I, I went to an, a mixed onsen when I was 18 here, and the stupid manager at the youth hostel, he, he tricked me. He's like, you know, it's a mixed onsen. Back then, the internet sucks. It's like 2005, right? I don't know anything. And I'm like, trying to type up mixed onsen. Nothing's coming up. So I'm like, well, fuck it. I got to take his word on it. Go there. Old people just staring at my junk for about 30 minutes before I had to get out. <laughs> oh, man. It was... Uh, well, I made somebody's day that day, hopefully. So that was nice. Okay. I'll tell you what. Any day in the winter, going into an onsen is a good day. Yeah. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't see the fascination with... From about May to about, I don't know, September, October, I don't go near it on set. Yeah, but right. The, any other time of the year, you can't, you know, you cannot spend enough, you know, you cannot spend too much time in one. Nice. So, uh, okay. So, and, and then I guess the next question would be, where is your local hangout, you know, aside from your friend's house that you're at right now, where do you go to hang out outside of work and outside of home? Like, where's your go-to place? Well, in this town I am here, which is not Morioka, back in Morioka, it would probably be Sundance, occasional visit to Faces, because I've known the owner for like the whole time I've been here. Um, maybe go to the some of the local restaurants. Um, here, I here in the town I'm in right now, which is Oshu, is that what you'd like to hear? Sure, yes. Okay, well, Oshu City, um, there's uh, one pretty decent bar in town called climb okay but he's got a really nice you know the the uh the uh the owner and his uh, his uh girlfriend oh, they they own it together um they're pretty chill couple they like to go snowboarding a lot when they're when they have free time um they're very good at producing a really relaxed kind of place you know you hear like reggae music on the you know in the, in the background they'll have like old snowboarding videos nice. you know it's going on the, on, the, on the big screen tv and they have like how they, they'll have a bar set up but they also have this one area where they have um a sit down table and then like about four or five of these huge throw pillows mm. they just like fall asleep in if you're tired enough that's awesome. Yeah. Okay. So that's your go-to hangout area locally right now at the moment. Um, that's this point, yeah. Nice. So, okay, guys. So let's get into the fun meat and potatoes part of this where uh, we get to hear some personal stories. So, Dean, can you tell us any fun stories about your time in that prefecture that I bet there's – everyone always has a ton of stories about something weird or something fun or just something that's like, I got to tell somebody about this because I'm going to forget it. I, I'm afraid I'm going to forget it. I need to share this knowledge. Can you pick some <laughs> of those stories and share it with us here on the podcast? Uh, uh, let me see what I can come up with. Uh, let's see. Uh <laughs> Oh, well, the first one and the one that uh, my friends are always so fun to bringing up when we go on our annual ski trip is uh, we were at an onsen and it was uh, it was one of the ones that had like the electrical onsen bit. OK, so um, I kind of was just joking around with my friends and uh, I uh, then, 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 like I I stuck my hand to the electrical pad and then pretended to get shocked and start jerking my body and unbeknownst to me right behind me was this old og chan probably about you know five five 120 pounds there's this big foreigner going wow actually i managed to hit the port dude and he was like oh my god he started oh no going. and uh, of course my friends were there like we don't know this guy <laughs> oh no did it all work out in the end where you're just like it was a joke sorry no. i just and like eventually, I was like, "Sorry, sorry, whoops." <laughs> nice. Oh man, oh, that's 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 funny when, like, you know, you do something like that, and there, you know, you think it's going to be a little like ah, but then it's just like, oh, it's okay, it's okay, it's cool, it's cool. Go sit down, go enjoy. Uh, do you have any other uh, any fun stories? Any yeah. related? Uh, here's another one. This comes from another one of our annual ski trips. It's not too far from the Matsukawa Onsen. In fact. I think we had just been to Matsukawa and said, or 
we went to like a restaurant near there. Okay. It was skiing trip. And we're driving down a road and it was a wintry night. It was a little icy. And all of a sudden we come up to a car that's on its side. So yeah. once again, we stopped. It's like, you got to see if this. Turns out the guy was okay. He's actually out of his car. And so we're like, you know, we're talking to him. You know, what happened? Doshta, doshta. He's like, you know. You know, we fell, I fell over, and um, he's, you know, he's saying like, you know, uh, I, I called my friends. They're going to be here in a second. Um, when they get here, can you come help me push the car back up? And um, okay, and so 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 eventually, his two friends come here. I think there was three or four of us, and we were able to take his car. It was a K car, and between the five of us, we were actually able to lift push up the car, lift it up, get it back up, and, and you know, and uh, as soon as he said that, he was just like, you know, thanks, you know, and he's like, do you want us to stay here and, like, be witnesses for the police or whatever? And, and then all of a sudden, his, his friend kind of looks at us and gives us this little, you know... <laughs> A little gluggy glug no, glug. No, 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 don't do it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, actually, if you just kind of go now so that you're not here, if the police show up, that would be even better. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> you just needed the bedded. <laughs> yeah, he was like, I would swear I thought it was cough syrup. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's oh, that's hilarious. I remember uh, one time I was riding my, my motorbike, <coughs> and I've, I've had my license suspended four times since I've been in Japan. And um, yeah, because I'm I'm a uh, I'm a rebel uh, without a cause, and uh, and also I rode a 50 cc scooter, which cops on purpose they go and they they try to uh, catch them as much as possible because they have more strict rules for those scooters. And um, it was about almost my fourth time getting suspended. I didn't really have that many points left, and there was this big intersection near my house, and you're supposed to turn left um, only when it's a green light, and. I was so, I'm, I don't know, whenever I saw a cop then, now I don't, but uh, I was always getting paranoid. I'm not thinking straight. Um, just because I'd been pulled over so many times for, like, shit that I didn't think was a big deal, and then I got a ticket. And so uh, I'm not thinking straight. I see, like, a car honk behind me. I thought it was the car behind me. It was the other car in the other lane. I freak out. I thought they wanted me to move, so I go and I turn, and uh, the light is supposed to be, it didn't turn green yet, but it's green for all the other ones. It's green for right and straight, but not for left, and... Uh, there's a cop in the fucking intersection like area right there and he's on his stupid shito bike and he's all waiting for me and I just turn left and all I hear is where 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 and he's like you know like so so go to get and I was like I was like fuck this I ain't getting caught by the cops again <laughs> I fucking floored it and I just I luckily there was such heavy traffic that he couldn't no one paid attention to the cop they wouldn't stop and I was able to go and my friend lived in that area I just parked my bike in his uh, garage for about an hour or two and then you know, hung out with him and then just left. And they were still looking for me around that area, but they didn't get my license plate. So, uh, Sam 1, Cop 0. Yeah, buddy. Uh, did you meet, um, speaking of fun stories, have you met any fun characters? I, You know, Russell told me that he's like, you know, I had this other dude, Rini Wate, but let me, I know Dean. This guy, Dean, he's awesome. He's a character. I think he's, you're really going to get along with him. Uh, yeah, have you met any other interesting, like, have you met people that you just, like, they really stick out in your mind from Iwate? Oh, th there's tons of them. But th the thing is, is, is just, like, a, a great quote I've heard about, um, about, uh, expats living in Japan. He's like, I really can't put my finger on it, but almost every expat I've met that lives in Japan, there's something a little off about them. Oh yeah, totally. I'm a total fucking freak. <laughs> oh, so good. Where where do you start? You know, where do you start? I've lived here 17 years. You know, yeah, plenty of people, plenty of people like that. Have you met like? But I mean, like for example, uh, the guy who helped sponsor my permanent residency. He was my guarantor for my permanent residency. He's actually uh, he's like I didn't know it at the time, but he's a millionaire. A Japanese millionaire, but he was just, he was always wearing dirty ass clothes because his, his hobby is hunting and fishing. So he has like a, his house with his family and everything. Uh, the kids are all grown up. Uh, I met him when I was going for a walk one day with some friends in like kind of 
every forest area. I wouldn't call it forest. It's just literally green places next to the highway that we were walking. And he's out there with his dogs, and I get to know him a lot. And anyway, he's like, yeah, I find out. I didn't know he was a millionaire until I fucking asked him for permanent residency uh, uh -huh. help. But, um, yeah, I mean, like, he's a hunter. You know, uh, he, like, you know, he's he went on a world uh what do you call it a world trip when he in like in 1968 to like all these different countries uh you know he has his own construction company uh he has guns in japan i mean are there any people like that that kind of you're just like huh wow it's gonna be uh, hard well, for me to forget you i mean there's been quite a few uh both both japanese and foreign but i think i want to tell you a story that just kind of sums up japan for me in a lot of ways this this is when i was first here Mm -hmm. And uh, it was first here in, uh, in my jet year, maybe my third or f – yeah, maybe my third year. And uh, I had this uh, Japanese friend who – actually, uh, we became good friends at the health club because uh, he was working for Tokyo Marine in Morioka at the time. He had actually lived in Colorado for a year and played football there. And, uh, you know, it's like I was – and he had actually played the Japanese professional league for two years too wow um, second i think it was second thing. and uh so and uh, he was also an avid skier so one day the two of us are we we go up to hachimantai ridge which this is even after all the skiers have closed and um we're going up there and what we're doing is we got his car and we were taking turns driving like you go to a certain point up the ridge you go to the top and then you uh and then you uh and then you ski down, and then, you know, we were taking turns. Like, I go oh, down this. Oh, okay. So. so then eventually we met this Japanese couple that had to be in their 50s at the time. And, uh, and they were doing the same thing. So it's like, hey, well, you know, one driver and three skiers at the same time is all the more fun. And, and, so, and so they're, you know, like, yeah, we did that for a couple runs. Then the, uh, the, the couple, they said, we're going to show you this really great place to ski. And she brings us up this ridge. And at this time, I was probably about 40 pounds lighter, probably in the best shape of my life. And my friend, he, he was like two years away from, you know, playing fullback for a Japanese professional football team. We were in pretty good shape at the time. This is back, you know, back in your 30s, which is a lot different than being in your late 40s. <laughs> but anyway, so and this just sums up Japanese for me, so Japan so completely for me. She takes us up to this place, and we're hiking up in our ski boots. And you know, by, the further we get up, the further ahead of us the lady's getting, because her husband was down there with the car. He was going to wait for us at the bottom of the, the bottom of the ridge. And we, so she basically kicks our butt by about a, I, I don't know, like a, a third of a mile up to the top of the ridge. Then she waits, and as soon as we get up there, she's like. You want to smoke? And we're both like, no way. She, was, <laughs> she toasts us up to the top there. You know, and, we, and we're just thinking, she just kicked our butt up there. And she gets out and she has to smoke. <laughs> and it's just, just like, that, would, that to me is Japan in a, in a nutshell. <laughs> just like, you can't get it, but they're so efficient and everything. So much better. But then they do something weird, like they have a cigarette at the end. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you can't explain it, but you want it explained anyway. <laughs> That's awesome, dude. So uh, why don't you tell us, uh, how about, uh, you know, tell us about your job there. Like, how's working out in Iwate Prefecture, and what's your commute like? Oh, well, I'm living in the town I'm working in right now. I, I uh... I um, I worked at a private school for 11 years, and uh, then they decided they wanted to replace my full-time butt with a local uh, housewife, expat housewife, working six hours a week. And everybody, students and other faculty members agree that that school, that which will remain unnamed, um, is that their, their English program is going to a hell in hand basket. So. <laughs> okay. But, yeah. Um, but, uh, so I'm at this new job with a BOE here in Oshu City, okay. which is about an hour on the, an hour south of Morioka, either by train or by car, or at least if you take the highway and, um, you got to track it back. What did, what did you want to know? I wanted to know just like, how's working in general? How's your work environment? How are your coworkers and how's, 
How's the commute? Because you're in the north, so I'm guessing like snow, it's probably a pain in the ass to commute by car. Well, it has become that, but I'm actually in a rural school district, so when I go to my visit schools, um, I need a car. You know, each yeah. one. There are five of us. Um, we are all Americans working for the BOE. We all have like one main junior high school, one sub junior high school, and then four elementary schools that we go to mm-hmm. across this uh, fairly decent sized city. Okay. And, uh, so, yeah, I doubt any of us are getting rich doing this, but uh, it's it's a job. And uh, Iwate, more so than most other prefectures, you'll be really limited uh, job-wise to English teaching for the most part. There are a few other jobs, but you just, you got to have really good Japanese. Um, on occasion, Appy, the, the uh, ski resort that has uh, hired foreigners, they've... They've hired. Uh, they've they have hired an Aussie friend of mine to be basically a bellboy there. Um, another American friend. She was doing some work with their foreign recruitment bureau and also some work with uh, working in the hotel there. So they'll hire on occasion according to their needs um, as a foreigner. You'll find some business jobs. A lot of people eventually get. To do with their own Akaiwas. So. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. But the, by and large, if you're a if you, if you're a, a Western foreigner like me working here, you're prob pretty high chance you're teaching English in okay. one form. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry to cut you off there. Uh, okay. So you're teaching there. Uh, so um, so anyway, what about the next question? Is how about the place that you currently live in? Do you yeah. like it? Is it good? Is it bad? Uh, and how's the rent? Well, the rent's not bad. I've got a decent sized place for about four baht, 40,000 yen a month. Um, and as an asthmatic, um, it's it has no tatami. It's all flooring. And my asthma has been so much better this winter. I'm like, I'm never going to live in Japan on tatami mats ever. Which really? I was the- my own place, yeah. That's funny. I'm I'm asthmatic too, but like uh, I had no problem living on, uh, living in a tatami room for like five, I don't know seven years so far here. No, uh, are you currently living in it? No, uh, well, right now my 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 room is flooring, but even when I lived in tatami, uh, all my all the floors that I lived in for all this is like my fifth place I've lived in, and um, this is a house, right? And I live with housemates, so the room above me that's empty right now, that one's tatami. But I don't, uh, yeah, I mean, like, you know, I've never had problem with asthma and tatami. But you, you had problem with tatami mats? Yeah, that's stud. So I, I, um, I the, the rent's pretty good. Um, it's a nice town. It's, um, you know, I, I've i also lived here a lot. So I do occasionally go back up to Morioka about once or twice a month. Um, but it's not bad. It's got a ski area. Uh about a 45 minute drive away that gets a lot of snow and I'll spend most of my winter there. And and the second biggest de facto city in Iwate is only 45 minutes away. So if I want to watch Star Wars or a movie or they have a French restaurant or stuff like that, they also have a, uh, a uh, British guy who owns a little bit of a pub kind of place, not really a pub, but uh, you know, he's, he does sell, he's, he sells his own, he brews and he sells his stuff there and he's got a, a pretty good menu there too so it's got a little bit of those city trappings there too so it's it's not a bad situation um be perfectly honest the town i live in it's not growing <laughs> and uh, it's it's kind of adjusting to a lot of the problems that many japanese towns are with the, the shrinking population and uh you know businesses some businesses are just dying away and it, you can't replace them so it's it, it's definitely dealing with some of those issues but it's not a bad place to live in what about uh, the actual apartment itself? Like, can you tell us uh, how big? Like, two LDK, one LDK. How's the insulation? How's the heating? Any problems uh, with that? It's fairly modern. I believe it was built in 1990. Um, it's I forgot the DK, but it's about 40 cubic meters, which is not bad. It's like a, I was living in 30 in my last apartment in Morioka, and it felt a lot smaller. Um, I've got an electric heater for my pipes in the winter. Oh, so that, that's important. 
And that is very important because if you get the older apartments, you know, your pipes will freeze. And the electric heater keeps that to a minimum. Yeah, my uh one of the one of my viewers, he came down to um from Hokkaido and he stayed at my house in uh, one of my empty rooms for a bit. And uh, unfortunately, when he went back up to Hokkaido, he forgot. Like I thought he knew. I thought people know. But you're supposed to turn off your your water, especially if you're going to be going for a while. His he showed me like a little. He took a video of it, and his floor just let all of it just flooded. Like it's just while he was gone, just just tons of water in his apartment while he was gone. Uh, so the pipes break, and then the the, the ice melts, and so the flow comes back, and then. Psh- Yep, yep. So he was uh he's he's gonna have an expensive water bill this month. Yep, it's gonna be fun. Uh okay. Um so I guess there's only two questions left, Dean. And uh the the second to last question is would you recommend somebody living in Iwate for their first time coming to Japan? Why or why not? Uh well, I think you'll have to uh, I'll I need to preface that you. There are some people who are going to come into it and they're going to love it. They're going to like the experience. They're going to just you know some people work as ALTs or whatever in these small towns and they just have incredible experiences. The the smallness of it. You get to be close knit. You get to be part of the community. You'll never you'll never get that in Tokyo. You know you're just not going to get the close knit. The you know there's you know there's a lot of these families. With, you know, a lot of the communities will take you in as theirs. You know, a lot of people who come here and had great experiences like that. Problem is you have to ask yourself, am I willing to put up with what I need to to get to that point? And one, you're going to be, you're going to have to make at least some effort with the Japanese language. You're going to have to get used to, you know, doing with some of the trappings, you know, doing without some of the trappings of city life. Um, you know, you have to ask yourself, do I really need to go to a, you know, a, you know, a, do, do I need to go clubbing every, you know, three or four times a month? You know, if you're that type of person, no, you're not gonna, you're not gonna like Iwate and you spend a, a year here and, you know, look, you'll either go back to your country or you'll find a bigger place in Japan. Mm, okay. But if if you're if you're a little more adventurous, if you're perhaps a tad more open-minded about what you're looking for or what your background's been or what you know you can handle, it would be a great experience, a great, great, a unique experience. Okay, so that's a definite, if you're a closed-minded person who does it, who, who's superficial and likes their clubs and their, and their boozing and their, and, well, their, and their whoring on Tuesdays, definitely not come to Iwate. That's not a direct quote, but it's... <laughs> Sorry, it's that's just what does, I... It I, sort of does <laughs> sum it up. <laughs> that's, yes. I mean, it, it, if you're willing to go through some hardships that may not be there in other places in Japan mm. to get a, you know, perhaps a, a deeper, more rooted experience, you'll get it. The question is, do we, you know, are you, are you going to, you know... You're going to have to get used to, you know, you, sometimes your dinner's flopping on your plate yeah. or it looks like saliva. <laughs> yeah. You know, in, you know, Tokyo, you can always hit a Moss Burger or a, a McDonald's or something like that. Yeah, I, uh, that's um, yeah, that's never been an issue for me. I love Japanese food, but I bet some people, yeah, they're going to, you're definitely going to be coming out of your comfort zone with that stuff. Um, so I guess, Dean, this is the final, final question so far. And uh, it's going to be, so what are your future plans? Are you planning on dying in Japan? Or are you going to plan on dying somewhere else? That's still up in the air. You know, I'm uh, 50 years old. I've got parents who are around 80 years old. They're in pretty good health right now. But you can never take things for granted. You know, mm. um, I may end up having to go back to the States. Also, not sure if I want to do the career ALT thing. As much as I love teaching, I really do like my job. Um, I definitely enjoyed it. For me, that for I had been working at a high academic level high school for eleven years as a de facto teacher, and now to be an ALT and I in a uh, BOE, it's required some readjusting, some changing, 
and my approaches. But I, I found that you know, my biggest worry was how am I going to teach elementary school kids? And I've had the most fun teaching them. Yeah. So, oh. Yeah. I mean, I guess the big thing here is is um, I don't know if you've heard, but there's the potential for the ILC, the International Linear Collider, to come to Iwate. I, I don't is, know what that is. Sorry. Okay. Um, are you will you are you aware of what CERN is in Switzerland? C E R N. I'm sorry. No. Okay, it's an atom smasher. An atom they smasher. Take, uh, it's it's basically a long tube, kilometers long where scientists take atomic particles and smash them at each other and study what happens when it happens. It's it's particle physics research. Okay. And the state-of-the-art facility right now is called CERN, um, and it's in Switzerland. And they're, the, the International Scientific Committee is trying to plan and get funding and start the next generation collider which is called the linear collider because the as opposed to CERN where the uh, the the tubes that the uh, particles are going through are circular so they they they're set around they'll be actually be shooting straight at each other in the linear collider okay and of course if that happens this is one of the next big science projects you know and, and it would be international there would be researchers they they say that it would employ probably half the particle physical scientists on the planet if it's to be built wow okay and, and of course the and it would be in operation for 100 years and oshu actually happens to be one of the they they've chosen the candidate site and it is for the most part in iwate the a small part of the collider will be in miyagi too and of course if this comes to fruition, if, if all these governments get together and decide who's going to fund it and, you know, with with the potential, you know, Abe, what's he thinking? What does he really want this year? Does, you know, does he want more money to fund Olympics and, uh, you know, a potential rearming of the Japanese military mm -hmm. or is he like this? Um, yeah. You know, in, in America, what's Donald Trump thinking about sending funding money here mm. is it going to come to fruition or not of course if it comes to fruition it means a lot of jobs for a lot of people in the area and a fair amount of foreigners in iwate would probably be able to do some certain kind of work with the construction and the uh the uh the the use of this and this it would the decision comes in 2018 Okay. The, the final Japanese government decision, yes, we will do it. No, we won't. Comes in 2018. Construction would probably start around 2020, and it would be in operation sometime around 2030. Wow. Okay. So that's we got <laughs> quite a bit of ways to go for this. But so I, as, as a long-term resident of Iwate, I would not mind being involved in some form in the revitalization and the implementation of the ILC. That sounds awesome. Okay, so hopefully if that happens, you you might be still stuck in Iwate during that time. Well, that that'd be the big thing. Other than that, we'll just get, get got to take it year by year. Mm, play it by ear, pretty much. I have another year in my contract, so you know we'll 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 see how things go. But generally speaking, I mean, especially with you know who getting elected back in the states, mm -hmm. there's not a lot of incentive for me to go back. Yeah. Right now, except to visit my family and my friends yeah i think uh what is it you know it's funny how all like pretty much any expat that you talk to um they were all not voting for what's his name and they but it's just so funny how it's like a lot of people that have that international experience where they're like we want you to get along with everyone blah 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 like you know there's more to globalization than anti-globalization and working together is way better than cutting people off uh yeah unfortunately not a lot of americans go traveling abroad and that's uh, i think it was like less than 10 percent of the country has a passport or something but that's yeah yeah it definitely shows but hey i mean yeah i love japan uh and the whole reason why i'm doing this podcast is to show people who also love it and just you know hopefully uh express to everybody that's thinking about coming to japan is that you know, you don't need to be friends with these guys that are going to be here for like a year or two. There's people that have been here for a long time and they're going to still be here. And uh, that should not scare you away from thinking about being in Japan long term and long inve long term investing in Japan. So, yeah, that was just uh, 
you know that's one of the reasons i made this podcast and uh yeah man uh (laughs) anyway guys this is the time uh in the podcast where i give the guests time to plug whatever they want to plug so dean please the floor is yours plug away all right well first plug is i would implore each and every one of you especially if you're uh expats living in japan to study up on what the ilc is and you can find material on the internet it uh you know for the and especially if you're in tohoku it could be a a game changer for the tohoku region uh especially if you're in japan really find out what it is and what it can offer you know it's 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 something that is is i is suffering from um a lot of lack of knowledge and mis, you know, the misunderstanding of what it is. You know, it's it's not bringing in a nuclear, you know, power plant. It's 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 a totally different thing. And um, you know, especially after Fukushima, people are kind of scared of, you know, splitting atoms. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just a little, right? Just a little, <laughs> a little cautious. But it, the the, the long term benefits to Japan could be very very good, and the the long term benefits to a recovering tohoku region would be incredible you know um and also um you know study what you can about iwate there's like a prefectural english page um i wish i'd looked it up but uh my friend up in the uh, who works for the prefectural government um she's an american and um she's in charge of that and it's out there and i just i forgot the name (laughs) i wish i could plug it, but um, you know, look up EYT on the uh, internet, and, and uh, of course, I'll give plug to a couple of businesses in Morioka. The first one being Sundance in the Nikatsu building, and also uh, Faces, which is a uh, the the, uh, the nightclub, and it's been owned by a friend of mine from uh, Mississippi. And uh, ask for James when you go there. And, uh, tell him Dean sent you. Maybe you'll get a free drink out of it. <laughs> nice. Yeah, uh, guys. Another, one more place is uh, Nirvana Restaurant, Morioka. It's it's uh, Nepali slash Indian slash Thai slash whatever else. It's Asian and it's hot and it's pretty good. Nice. Although, and they got the best naan on the planet. Nice. Uh, I love love naan. Love butter chicken. All this great stuff. Uh, okay, is there anything else that you would like to be uh, that you would like to plug, Dean? Oh, well, yeah. you ever see anything with my name on the internet, of course. <laughs> okay, do you have That's a... Uh, R-U-E-T-Z-L-E-R. <laughs> okay, uh, do you have like a blog or anything that you'd like people to check out? or? I don't have a specific blog, but I've been writing stuff for all different kinds of people and all different kinds of websites over the years. So if you word search my name or even just do Iwate, usually usually if I, if I, if I uh, put... Just do a Google search on Iwate. A couple of my articles will show up in the first 10. So it's out there. (laughs) Okay, guys. Awesome. Uh, Thank you so much, Dean, for coming out and taking the time out of your day today to be part of this awesome, growing, uh, ever-growing podcast. Uh, I really appreciate it, man. Uh, It means a lot to me and to the viewers as well. Um, And, uh, yeah, man. Uh, And this is the part, guys, where I do my own little quick quick quiet private shout out here and i'd like to thank all the people out here who are listening right now that are part of my patreon sponsor uh community thank you guys so much without you guys this podcast probably couldn't be funded or supported uh i'd also like to thank all the normal tq sam viewers as well that co- uh, that took time out of your day to come check this out it really means a lot to me that you guys are showing some love and showing some interest in this podcast and yeah if you are interested in any of these uh in any of the places that dean said uh or mentioned during the podcast there will be if you're watching this on facebook or youtube it's going to be down in the description below so make sure to go check those out and uh yeah um and if you have any more questions for dean uh, you'll be able to probably contact him uh with the contact info uh listed there later on in the podcast and hopefully for season two or three we'll get dean back here and we'll we'll do some more fun talks all right sounds good and uh dean before you go can i get you just to sign off with me and say stay black that's my thing i always say stay black yo because i'm just i'm cool like that i am the whitest guy on the planet it's okay, dude. Hey, when when we say stay black, we're all cool. We're all black. We're all black power. All right. 
Okay. Ready? Yep. Three, two, one. Stay, Stay black. black. <laughs> yeah. Dude, forgive me for that one. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Woo. Hey everybody, just some last minute announcements. If you're not already doing it, please consider following us on social media, links down below. Big thank you to everybody who clicked on the podcast to listen today. Do us a favor, and if you liked this podcast, help us grow by smashing that like button, subscribe button, and subscribe bell to get notified when the new podcast comes out. Did you learn something new on today's podcast? Do you want to hear more? Which out of these three prefectures should we do a podcast on next? Let us know by emailing us at tikiosam at gmail.com. If you are listening to this in your car and you want to conserve your phone data, consider following us on the other podcast platforms. We are currently on iTunes, Spotify, and SoundCloud. Links down below. Like always, this wouldn't be a Tikio Sam production without giving a special sweet thank you slash shout out to all of the Tikio Sam fam who support us over on patreon.com slash Sam. Without your support, this podcast would be much harder to produce. Thank you all so much for the support. That's it for this month's Prefecture podcast. What did you think of it? Good? Bad? Let us know in the comment section down below. Finally, we are always looking for new people to interview on this podcast. If you check out the video description below, you can find out what prefecture we still need to find people to interview for. If you know somebody, let us know by emailing us at tikyosam at gmail.com. Like always, this has been the Where or Come From Japan podcast. Thank you all for watching, and most importantly, stay black. <laughs>